Let me explain to you what happened in this, uh, in this sequence of events as best we know it at this time. Uh, in order for the shuttle to leave the Earth successfully, uh, uh, about a thousand events have to happen in the last five seconds, including a test procedure of the three main engines and then the two solid rocket boosters are ignited to get the shuttle off the ground. The way the main engines work is that a series of pumps increase the pressure um, of, uh, of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen going down into the combustion chamber. But there's a low pressure turbo pump which worked correctly for the uh, liquid oxygen tank and got the pressure there up to about 400 pounds per square inch and then the liquid oxygen was forced into another turbo pump which spins at a rate of 24,000 revolutions per minute much faster than your record player or CD player I mean much much faster and um, the temperature inside there um, got so hot that it triggered an alarm which shut down the main engines what we're looking at right now is the live picture you see a huge yellow hose that's hanging down that provides um, outside air and exhaust what's there is inside the crew cabin right now the astronauts have been sitting out there for about uh, well, for more than two hours um, there are um, uh, the, the temperature inside the shuttle at this point uh, is probably okay, out of the comfort range they've been sitting there the sun has been up for an hour the air conditioning system along with all the other electrical systems inside has been shut down so they're probably they're probably wet with sweat at this point as they wait to get out of there my colleague Paul Karen joins me again live on the phone from the uh, Kennedy Space Center Paul, I'm, I'm sure you've been uh, talking to the experts there. What's the latest from your end? Well, NASA engineers have told me, John, that the problem appears to be, as you had mentioned, with the high-pressure oxidizer turbo pump on main engine number three. Apparently, they have, it shows two te temperature channels on this uh, pump, and one channel was high into the red zone, and another one was near that. Uh, as far as past history with these pumps, they've had problems in the past with these pumps, but in regards to seals on the pump, and NASA engineers have told me this problem today does not appear to be with the seals. Hmm. All right, Paul. Um, I'll tell you, if I can show up on, on TV for just a second, I can sort of illustrate what's going on with this turbo pump or what this apparently so went on with it. I'm, I may not be able to do that, but it, the turbo pump is this huge round object like this that spins on a channel. And these, um, these channels that they're talking about are little holes in the inner chamber with thermometers in them. There are two thermometers. One of them went above a, a, a degree mark that uh, told the computer that there might be a problem. And then the other thermometer started to show the temperature go up as well. And that's when, um, that's when this thing was shut down. Those uh, ground engineers right outside the hatch, the uh, uh, escape uh, route for the shuttle, have just opened it. Go ahead. Copy that. Thank you. Normally, the crew All right, will the, egress the, the shuttle crew, uh, in the same uh, order that they uh, entered the vehicle. How they're coming out. Uh, that being the case, we should see Dan Birch coming out first. Probably the last two people that we'll see coming out will be the commander and the pilot, but because um, they are the people who've had to do most of the work during the past two hours, we'll talk about them. Michael Baker um, was born in 1953, four days after my birthday, as a matter of fact, October 27th. He's from Lemoore, California. He graduated from high school there in Lemoore and uh, got a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Texas back in 1975. He's married and he has two children and um, he's an experimental test pilot and uh, has been in the astronaut corps uh, since 1985. And, uh, He's uh, uh, not that old relative to some of the astronauts, but he is the, um, the commander of this mission based on the fact that he, um, he has been on the shuttle several previous missions. Terrence Wilcutt is um, a major in the United States Marine Corps. He's um, another one born in October, 1949. He's about my age, married uh, with two children again. He likes to fly, he likes to run, he lifts weights, and he does woodworking. What we're looking at now on television, uh, the ground crew members are now going inside the shuttle, uh, providing uh, some assistance probably to the first of the astronauts to come out. There are, in addition to the two, uh, the pilot and the commander who we just showed you, the payload commander is former CIA analyst Tom Jones. It may be that Tom is up on the upper deck with the pilot and commander as well. And uh, then down below on the, uh, the double-decker um, two decks of the, uh, of the shuttle orbiter, are the three mission specialists. And uh, my guess is, because the astronauts generally come out 
in the opposite order of the way that they went in is that we're going to see Dan Bursch, who was the last astronaut to get on board first. He's a, a mission specialist and uh, has been a member of the astronaut corps for more than five years. One of these astronauts um, has only been in the astronaut corps for two years. Steve Smith has uh, had a, a very okay, fast see, tour from joining well, the astronaut see, corps to flying in space. Yeah, can you, verify, Kevin, um, you can see Steve there. He was uh, in yeah, the astronaut class of two people. years ago, the first member of that class to fly, and he is flying in the space shuttle much more that. rapidly than other that. astronauts have in the past. He uh, was at a news conference a couple of weeks ago, and he laughed about the fact that he got to go first, and uh, he hoped it was because he was so much better than the other astronauts in that class. But these fellows... Um, not to put too fine a point on it, but they all have uh, um, terrific egos as part of what you need to have the right stuff to be in the astronaut corps. Paul, the, the hatch door is open now, as I see it from here, and um, it, uh, we haven't yet seen one of the red flight suits hey, indicating that Dan Bursch or one of the other astronauts is coming out. But what are you hearing from a technical point of view about what's, what's causing us to have this time on television together? Well, it's still the, uh, the problem, as we had mentioned earlier, with the high-pressure oxidizer turbo pump on main engine number three. And uh, now one of the questions, of course, that lingers, John, as you know, is how long will the delay of the Space Shuttle Endeavour liftoff uh, actually happen now? Yeah, well, one of the things that they said they would probably have to do, almost certainly have to do, is go out to the launch pad and um, pull all three main engines off the bottom of this space shuttle. A very time-consuming and painstaking procedure. It's, uh, it's not like taking the, a the engine off your car because these engines are much more fragile than, than automotive engines and uh, you can't just hook, uh, have a crane out there to do it. You have to do it uh, in a very meticulous, painstaking manner. They're putting some insulation material out over the hatch now. The hatch was coated with grease before the astronauts went in, and there's, uh, there's and the, the crew first members with their helmets still on are beginning the to, astronauts to come out. Come out of Endeavour. Six astronauts will be uh, um, egressing uh, in the next few minutes. I see Tom Jones with his helmet off. He's the second of the two astronauts to come out. It looks like Peter Weissoff was the first to come out, followed by Dan Bursch. These are the astronauts who sit on the lower deck of the two-deck uh, shuttle orbiter uh, flight compartment. And same QCO2C, uh, steps 141 being now performed, 142 through 147 not performed. The astronauts normally get in with the one on the left, the one on the right, and the one in the middle. And uh, the way they came out was the one closest to the door first, then the okay, one in the middle. Go ahead. We're likely now to see the one on the left of the bottom uh, section coming out. Copy that. Astronauts appeared to be uh, not much the worse for wear. They were smiling. Although I bet uh, to a man they would tell you they're not happy right now. See that yellow hose going inside now, providing some cooler air to the crew. It, uh, uh, the astronauts have told me when I've talked to them about sitting out there on the pad waiting to lift off that the biggest problem they have is the temperature. The sun in Florida is beating down on the side of their shuttle orbiter. The, uh, in space, it's pretty cold, and uh, they're, they're able to maintain a temperature of about 72 degrees after they get in orbit. But before they leave, they just don't have enough air conditioning to keep their bodies at a, at a good, cool temperature. And it gets up to 95, 96 degrees inside the orbiter. For the past couple of missions, the astronauts have been wearing what's called a cool suit, a, a series of uh, water-cooled tubes wrapped around their bodies that provide a certain relief from this heat, but you can imagine the tension and the pressure that they have been under since um, 651, 654, um, uh, about the past 59 and a half minutes since they were expecting to be uh, well on their way and into orbit, and they've had to sit there on, atop this 500,000 gallons of liquid fuel and those two very Standing dangerous now solid for rockets. the uh, remaining four crew members to depart the shuttle endeavor. Just about an hour ago, we did have a main engine cut off. 
with the countdown clock reading uh, T minus zero. Uh, however, the solid rocket boosters did not ignite. Uh, the uh, onboard computers on Endeavour uh, did their function well. They stopped the uh, launch sequence from uh, reaching its termination point of uh, launching Endeavour with booster ignition. Uh, the computers did their job as they have been programmed to do, and that is if all of the aspects of uh, uh, the critical launch components on the vehicle are not in their proper order, then the launch will not proceed. They are designed that way, uh, and, and they perform their uh, function uh, as they were designed.